All right, we are going to conclude chapter four on forecasting, talking about seasonal variations in data. So looking at seasonality and putting together a seasonal index. This is one of my favorite models in the entire chapter, especially if you have a lot of good historical data looking at uh, year over year data or month over month data. So for the example you're going to see uh, that we do together, there's going to be some clear seasonal trends, and this is going to be one of the most accurate forecasts that we calculate together. So the seasonal uh, data or the seasonal indexes, this is the multiplicative seasonal model, and we can adjust trend data for seasonal variations in demand. So we can look at the variations in demand by season and make adjustments and predictions based off of creating an index. There are some steps to creating a seasonal index, and that's step one, find the average historical demand for each season. Step two, compute the average demand over all the seasons. Step three, compute a seasonal index for each season. Step four is estimate next year's total demand. Sometimes total demand for the next year will be given to you, and other times we'll say, hey, there's going to be a 10 or 15% increase from last year's demand. So estimate next year's total demand might not always be given exactly. You might have to calculate step four. And then step five, divide this estimate of total demand by the number of seasons, then multiply it by the seasonal index for that season. And that gives you or provides you the seasonal forecast. Okay, so let's look at an example. A Des Moines distributor of Sony laptop computers wants to develop monthly indices for sales. Data from the past three years is shown below. So you can see they've got three years worth of data, and then they have month by month data as well. So this is really good historical data. Before we even go into diving into the details, does anyone see a seasonal trend? Well, I do. Once again, what I can see is that during the summer months, so May, June, July, those months all have a higher demand than they historically have for some of the other months of the year. So if you look at January, February, March, it's got lower demand. You get to the summer months, there's a higher demand. And then as you get towards the end of the year, there's a lower demand as well. So um, not only do they have good historical data, but just by looking, you can see that there is a trend and there is some seasonality uh, for this distributor. So we want to do our seasonal index. And so there's a couple different steps. Our very first step is to calculate the average for each season. Okay, so in this case, the season is a month. Okay, we're not saying, uh, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall. No, each season in this case is a month. So step one, you will take 80 plus 85 plus 105 and divide that by three because you have three years worth of data. And that gives you 90 as your average January demand. Okay, 80 plus 85 plus 105 divided by three gives you 90. Okay, now let's do February. So for February, you take 70 plus 85 plus 85, divide those by three, and that gives you 80. Okay, so you're gonna do this for every single month. And in Microsoft Excel, you could do this very fast. So you just take January's, February's, March, you get all the averages, you put them in one column together, and you, um, you are now gonna have your average demand for every single season. The next step, which is essentially step two, so that's why I kind of changed the color here, you have to add up all of these averages. So 90 plus 80 plus 85, and all the way down to December, if you were to take the sum of the averages, you would get 1,128, okay, 1,128. Then you divide that by 12 because there are 12 seasons in this case, which is 12 months. So 1,128 divided by 12 gives you 94. That's your average per month, okay, 94 laptop sales per month. So now for the next step, you could create another column that says your average monthly, you can put 94 there. I realize it looks a little redundant, but you'll understand why we do it in the next step, because we're gonna be creating our seasonal index. And our seasonal index is done by taking 90 
divided by 94, so our seasonal index for January is 0.957. Now for February, we take 80 divided by 94, and that gives us a seasonal index of 0.851. So you can see for January and February, the number is lower than one. And that's because it is less than our average seasonal usage or our, less than our average usage. So this season is a lower season and therefore the seasonal index is below one. Now let's look at July. Well, July, your average sales in July is 105 versus your average um, of 94. <clears throat> so your seasonal index is then greater in July. So your seasonal index is 1.117. So that's how you create the seasonal index. So you've done every step um, up to this point, but now I'm going to ask you a question. So if we expect annual demand for next year's computers to be 1,150 units, we would use these seasonal indices to forecast the monthly demand. So you can take 1,150 divided by 12. So you're going to have 95.83 as your new average for the next year. And I could say, hey, what is my forecast for January? So my forecast for January would be 95.83 multiplied by the seasonal index of 0.957. And for January, I would have a forecast of 92. For February, I could do the same thing. I would take 0.851 multiplied by 95.83, and that would give me a forecast for February of 82. Now let's jump down to July. So for July, if, in, if, if we want to forecast year four, where we're expecting our total sales to be 1,150, I've got a seasonal index in July of 1.117. So 95.83 multiplied by my seasonal index of 1.117. My forecast for July would be 107 units. So that's how you do a seasonal index. Okay, It's a, it's a pretty nifty tool for trying to calculate <clears throat> um, monthly or annual or seasonality type forecasts when you have good historical data where there's a clear seasonal trend. So unlike some of the other examples we had for moving averages or exponential smoothing, if you look at how this one plays out, you can see that our year one demand is in green. Okay, It had a seasonal trend to where January and February and March were a little low, summertime was high, and then our demand uh, went back down again towards the end of the year. The next year, year two in light blue, was a little bit greater. So we had an improvement in total sales in year two, but the seasonal trend remained the same. In year three, same thing. We had more sales in year three, and it followed the same seasonal trend. So doing all the steps we just did, our next year's forecast in purple, if we expect demand to be a little bit larger, you can see we've now calculated out exactly what that seasonal trend would look like uh, under this example. Now, one reason I just put in here the average uh, is because, again, if you were just taking averages of the data that you have, uh, that's what your forecast would look like, and that would be a very, very poor forecast because you would be over forecasting in the early part of the year. You'd be dramatically under forecasting during the summer. And then once again, in the, in the towards the end of the year, you would be over forecasting. And so um, in some months, you'd have excess inventory or excess capacity. And in other months, you probably have shortages uh, for both products and for labor. So uh, a seasonal index is a wonderful tool when you've got good historical data and you've got some clear seasonality in, in, in your business.